Ready to Love Season 5. This is Episode 8. And shoot, this might be more like um, a rant than a review because this show has gotten so pathetic. We got another self-elimination this week, y'all. This week, A self-eliminates. It's unbelievable. They talk about the great resignation out here. People resigning from jobs. Shoot, this show has the great elimination because people are walking off this show like it's a bad job. I don't even know what the point is at this time. Is this even a dating show? Because it almost seems like if you get a connection, you get eliminated. If you get a connection, you got to self-eliminate. What is the point? I thought this year was supposed to be different. I thought this season was supposed to be about making connections and then we get to see the couples together for a lot of, for a lot of the episodes. But here we still are, still trying to figure out who the connections are. This is a waste of time and energy. What kind of franchise is this when all your employees quit? That's basically what's going on. It's almost like employees are walking off the job for this show. Tommy talking about, oh, well, we're going to give y'all a break and we're not going to have the men eliminate anybody this week. Well, no, you're not going to have anybody eliminate this week because Ace already self-eliminated. So we already know what you're doing, Tommy. You ain't fooling nobody. Now we're just going to be having a bunch of people on here acting just to be on TV. It's no real connections. It's just fake. It, it may not be scripted, but it's getting real close to it. This was supposed to be the episode where people get to meet the homies of the guys and everything, but you got no shows. You got Tina not showing up. You got uh, Ace not showing up. Ace self-eliminating. This is a mess. Paul talking about, oh, I must be doing something right because I'm still here. No, you're not doing nothing right. It just means that everybody's self-eliminating and you know what? You just not the worst. That's not a good thing. That's like thinking you a good employee because, um, you know, you haven't gotten fired yet. No, you haven't gotten fired yet because they're so short staffed. They just got to keep you around. But trust and believe if they had some real employees, you would be fired by now. So Paul decides he's going to set up a um, meet the homies with his with his good friend, Chill Bill. And Tina's supposed to show up and the kids supposed to show up. But uh, uh, Tina ghosts Paul and ain't even showing up at all. Tina is overwhelmed. She talking about she she too busy. She can't be dating four or five people at a time, you know, because she running a business and she got a two year old. She should have never been on this show anyway. I don't know why she's trying to be on this dating show with a two year old. Some things you just got to put off for a little while to a better time. And this ain't good timing for Tina. I don't even know why she signed up for this show. Come to find out the kids on this show meeting Paul's best friend and the kids talking about she don't even really know Paul. They only really know each other for two weeks. We really only two weeks into this process after all these episodes. That's how long these people have known each other for two weeks. The kid said she likes how supportive Paul is. Supportive. After two weeks, you just said you don't even hardly know him. You don't know nothing about him. All this is just fake. The kid talking about she wants somebody she can take to the embassy, I guess, like a black tie affair, but also take to the hood cookout. What hood you going to, the kid? I don't believe it. I don't even think you go to the hood. Then Carmen walks in thinking she Megan the Stallion with these blue contacts. Girl, Carmen is just over here to be a villain. She's not interested in none of these people. Like she said, she just likes the competition. This ain't nothing but the Hunter Games to the Carmen, the Squid Games, whatever you want to call it. She here for the rumble and the tumble. She ain't here for the find no love. Not at all. Paul's friend Chill Bill says, you know what? Carmen represents the old Paul when you was Pete. When you was P.O. back in the day when you was doing, I guess, your hip hop, your music or whatever else and running the streets. That's who you would have got with when you was with Carmen. And the key is your future. That's Paul. That's who you're trying to be. But the truth of the matter is neither one of these women are, are good for Paul. The kid says she don't even really feel no spark with Paul. She's trying to feel it, but she don't feel nothing. She goes, like, she needs that spark. You know the kid. There she goes. She needs physicality. Then we get Sabrina going out on a date with uh, a sorry Tori. Tori invited uh, Sabrina and Ace. And Ace was a no-show. Ghosted him. Didn't show up at all for the date. Sabrina came in all business like she gave a handshake to the friend. I don't even know if she hugged Tori, but she gave Corey a little gift, a consolation gift. He was all happy, cheesing like, well, I guess it must mean something she gave me a gift. No, it don't mean anything. That's a consolation gift. She probably didn't even buy that gift, a candle. She probably regifted it to you. Women got tons of candles at the house. They got sitting around, candles people have given them. And then we go out, we might regift it. And that's what she did. She regifted you a candle, Tori. You ain't special. But I'm with Sabrina. When Ace didn't show up, Tori decides he's going to call Ace right in front of Sabrina. And Sabrina's like, i never been on no date when the man calls another woman. I, I heard that, Sabrina. That was foul. Tori, you know what? He's not fine enough Sabrina and I don't know why he keeps even pushing this narrative that somehow he might even have a shot with Sabrina he don't have a shot at Sabrina at all and even with Sabrina saying out loud hey why are you calling another girl why I'm sitting here he don't get up to excuse himself he don't get up to go to another room he keeps on dialing like he want to die Tori was Tori's for the bedroom and that's exactly what Sabrina was trying to make him in the beginning but you know what she done downgraded him from that too he ain't even for the bedroom no more 
Sabrina don't want to have nothing to do with Tory at all. She's just using him to, to, to have somebody to vote for her in the liberation room so she don't get sent home too. She's just stacking her car. And Tory all confused someone. I'm confused why Ace wouldn't show up but send me no text message. It's called ghosting you. Ghosting you is a message. It, it's, a, it's a message without communication. Read between the lines, Tory. Tory don't know how to read between lines. He ain't reading between the lines with Sabrina and he ain't reading between the lines with Ace. I don't have nothing for Tori. You two go grown to not know what this is. But when Sabrina goes to meet Demetrius, she got a whole different attitude. She give the friend a hug. She give Demetrius a hug. She handing out the hugs on the Demetrius date, but it don't last for long. Cause soon as soon as Demetrius' friend tells her that he's looking for somebody submissive, Sabrina's like, ah, hold on, I'm not submissive, and I don't like to take the and I don't like to follow. I like to take the lead. She said it's hard for me to follow. I'm independent, and I like to be in charge of everything. Well, at least she was honest. She might have been honest, but Demetrius' friend was like saying, "You honest, um, but I hate to tell you this. That ain't the man he is." Sabrina had got a whip up before. She said she was already afraid of this. I told Sabrina this long time ago that Demetrius wasn't the guy for her. We saw your list, Sabrina, in, in episode one. And I can tell you right now, Demetrius wasn't nothing on that list. So I don't even know why you kept pursuing him. It was all us. You just went off of what he looked like. You didn't go off nothing else. Because if you really compared your list to Demetrius, you would have figured this out a long time ago. Demetrius ain't into no alpha female who want to leave and be in charge and be the boss like Sabrina. Sabrina out here protesting Black Lives Matter. She running things. So Sabrina had another day. We find out she has another day with Donovan and Donovan brings his best friend, which is Phil from last year, who went off the show with uh, Sydney. But you know what? I guess when they filmed this, they were still together. But we already know Phil and Sydney ain't together anymore either. This show don't produce no results. None. So Tina shows up for the day with an attitude talking about she tired. She tired of dating four or five people. You shouldn't have come on the, sh on the show. I know you up and let your baby party still ain't even sleeping through the whole night. He only two years old. But Tina didn't show up for Paul. But she did. She sure did show up for Donovan. So now I'm going to tell Paul something that um, you're not her top choice. But Donovan got turned off. He was like, hey, why don't you eat some of your food? They had sushi and Asian food laid out. Tina was like, I'm tired. I, I already ate. I don't need nothing. Tina got a little attitude. She walked into a lot of means with attitude she don't have no patience at all she really not a good fit for nobody on this show i don't know why she this is not good timing for her at all when it comes to her life she's busy even donovan said i don't think there's no space for me in her life you right there ain't no space she running a business with a two-year there is no space for you you right about that donovan she need to come back at a later date a later time when she can put her mind fully to dating. Because right now, I think there's too many other things occupying her mind. Sabrina was up for when her answer. In fact, Donovan's friend was like almost like her answers are too perfect. I told you Sabrina's all business like she in an interview. She going to kill every interview because Sabrina know how to interview. She knows how to get the business done. But Sabrina, you know what? She's such a hypocrite. You know, the very thing she doesn't like a guy about, she's the same thing. I told you for early on, on, Sabrina had a whole list of stuff that she wanted a guy, but she was none of those things. Now she's sitting here talking about she don't know if Donovan is ready for a relationship because he's too soon out of a other relationship. Well, that's the same thing I said about you, Sabrina. You know, Sabrina is funny. She she can find something wrong with everybody. Phil said he's known Donovan for 12 years. He's seen his ups, he's seen his downs. And Sabrina didn't like that. I guess she didn't like the fact that, that he had some ups and some downs. What you want, a fairy tale, Sabrina? I know you do, because that list was a fairy tale. Sabrina is looking for a unicorn. She's not looking for no reality, no real relationship. She's on a dime is just out of a relationship. Well, so are you, Sabrina. You really just out of a relationship, too. Just like she's saying, Donovan's is not ready. You're not ready, too. You talking about you don't know if Donovan just wants to be, you know, fool around. You might be true about that, but Sabrina, I'm getting the same vibes from you, too. So I really don't have no problem with the things that Sabrina is saying. The problem is she doesn't realize she's some of those same things. That's the problem I have with Sabrina. But Donovan dropped the ball that, you know what, he don't know if he wants some other kids. But, uh, you know, I guess he says if, if his if his mate wants kids, he'll have them. Uh-uh, that's not convincing. And Sabrina doesn't have any kids. She definitely wants some kids. So it don't even look like this is going to be a good match. Because something fundamental is has, having kids, it can't be something that, okay, I'll do it if you want. Uh-uh. So they might have a Cali connection. They might like sitting here eating this sushi together. But I don't see no long term with this no more either. Because now that we know Donovan don't want no kids, what is the point? So Donovan don't necessarily want some kids with Sabrina and he don't want Tina who's already got a two-year-old. Why are you here too? Like I said, half these people shouldn't even be on this show. They need to stay on their own and find their mates on their own. They don't need to come in on a dating show like this because they're really not open to a lot of different things. Not at all. A lot of these people are just stuck in their ways. They want to stay stuck where they are. They want to do the same old thing they've been doing. And you know what? That's probably why they're still single because nobody really wants to step outside their comfort zone and do anything differently. They want to date the same type of people over and over again and do the same old things and not learn any lessons. I'm so over these people and this season. 
Then you have Clifton having a double date with Joy and Dakia. And then here we go. Here comes the sex talk. Every time Dakia walks in, we know we're going to start talking about sex. And Joy talking about the drink that Dakia had and looked like of a JJ. But Joy don't know after she left, they started joking about it. And Clifton was like, I would sure like to taste your drink, your JJ. And, and Dakia said, here, anytime. I bet you Joy didn't know about that little joke. Dakia, she can't stay away from the sex jokes. I don't know why. I really don't know why she don't know how to stay away from them. She might be a NASA employee, but she ain't got some, she don't have some sense on some things. She may have a lot of book sense and she may know how to fly me into the moon. But there's something else going on with the kids. She don't know how to stay away from certain things. In the end, Clifton's friend thought Joy was the better match. No, duh. Of course he's going to say that because Clifton already told him he's really only interested in Joy. And Joy is the better fit because they're both loud. They write about that. Probably the only real connection on here, the real genuine connection that you can feel is Joy and Clifton. That really is it. Everybody else, this is all just fakery. I'm glad A self eliminated. She basically ended up having another day with Tori and said, you know what? The reason I didn't show up is I didn't want to send the wrong message. This is going anywhere past a friendship. This is all platonic. She basically said the only person I had a connection with was Laverne. And now that he's gone, what's the point of being here? I heard that Ace, I would leave too. They really need to go back and revamp this whole show because it's just pathetic. But anyway, that's it, y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.